Hi, this is Nick from Tilta, and today we're going to take a look at how to set up and operate the Hydra Arm Mini. The Hydra Arm Mini is a portable, lightweight, and relatively easy to use system for filming moving vehicles from various angles at an affordable price. The system packs up into three boxes, which are lightweight and easy to transport. It features a modular design that allows the setup process to be as efficient as possible. If you are shipping the Hydra Arm Mini by air, you may need to rearrange some items into different cases in order to comply with your airline's oversized luggage requirements. Box 1 includes four suction cup mounts with support brackets, as well as two 50mm support pipes. The pan axis module, interior mounting hardware set, which includes one large monitor support bracket for the front passenger seats and is composed of two suction cups, two articulating arms, and one mounting bracket with multiple monitor mounting adapters. The support set also includes two monitor support brackets for the rear passenger seats. Box 2 includes tilt axis module and two sets of cable support rods. Box 3 includes two full-sized crane arm pieces, a two-pin limo to PTAP power cable, one crane arm end piece with a battery plate, a shock absorbing arm with a mounting plate, two support cables, a remote control with communication cable, a power cable, a tool kit, two ratchet straps, and various mounting hardware. We will now show you how to set up and install the Hydra Arm Mini in this following quick start guide. This system is compatible with the majority of vehicles, but it is not fully compatible with all vehicles. As the manufacturing of many vehicles differ, it cannot be guaranteed that the roof and frame will not be damaged, permanently marked, or dented. Such risks are possible. It is recommended to use the system with vehicles that have heavy-duty frames with roofs that support a higher weight capacity, that of which you'd find on most SUVs. Additionally, if your chute has special requirements, it is advised to choose a specific vehicle and weld a fixed bracket onto the roof or choose a vehicle with the infrastructure to create a mounting bracket that is permanently fixed to the roof as a designated camera crane vehicle. To start, make sure your vehicle's roof is free of any dust or dirt and wipe it down with a cleaning solution if needed. When installing the first suction cup, please make sure that it is as close to the edge of the roof as possible while not interfering with the frame of the car as you will need to run an additional ratchet strap at a later step. Align your first suction cup. Once positioned, add pressure and press down on the suction cup plunger. When installing the second suction cup, you'll need to make sure there is approximately 69 centimeters of distance between the center of each of the rod mounts. When working on the other side, you can loosely line up the suction cups by eye and then make further adjustments as needed. To install your first piece of support pipe, please screw in the extension piece as most vehicles will require this. You can then place the support pipe across so that it is in line and being supported by both suction cup brackets. And do the same for the other set. Before clamping down, you'll want to make sure that the support pipes are relatively even and centered, and then you can tighten them down. Finger tight is good for this point. Next, you will need to install the ratchet straps for additional support. Run one end of the strap around the support beam and down back into the vehicle. Pull the strap entirely through and move to the other side of the vehicle. In a similar fashion, run the strap around the support beam and then back into the vehicle. Next, you'll want to run the strap through the ratchet, making sure to get rid of as much slack as possible before ratcheting down. You'll want this connection to be tight, but not too tight as to damage the vehicle. You can then double check both sides to make sure everything is secure and repeat the same process for the back suction cups. Next, we're ready to install the pan axis module. Before installing, make sure that the power port and information port on the back of the module are facing the back of the vehicle. You will need at least two people to lift this module and make sure the clamps are unlocked before lifting it onto the vehicle. 
Once in place, you can tighten down the clamps, but make sure they are not too tight so that the module can still slide, as this is not its final position. Next, remove the locking washers on top of the four bolts on the pan axis module. Then, you are ready to install the tilt access module. Although possible to install while closed, it's recommended to open the top cover to get a better grip on the module. Again, you will need at least two people to lift this module. You will then need to align the four bolts on the pan access module with the four threads on the tilt access module. You can then push both the pan and the tilt access module towards the center of the vehicle and secure the final position by tightening down on the clamps. Next, you'll need to further secure the tilt access module to the pan access module by reinstalling the same locking washers over the bolts on the pan access module. Repeat this process for all four bolts. Remember, before operating, all washers and clamps must be tightened down with an Allen key. It is recommended to double check these clamps throughout your shooting day. You can then close the top cover. First, we will connect our controller communication cable to the back of the pan access module. Then, we will connect the cable to the back of the controller. After that, we will connect our power cable to the back of the pan access module. You can then connect your power cable to your 220 volt power source. In this case, we're using a power converter with our 1000 watt hour EcoFlow battery, but if you already have a 220 volt source, you can connect to it directly. When powering up your controller for the first time, you will need to turn your center dial to its middle position. You will then need to input your authorization key. To obtain an activation key, go to tilted.com activate and enter the product ID on the remote control screen. After reading the disclaimer and warnings, hit agree. Next, we'll need to prepare our joysticks. We'll double press the lock to unlock the screen and enter the main menu in the top right corner before selecting device info. From there, we can press joystick cal. This will recalibrate the joysticks and fix any issues that may have been caused during shipping. We can then return to the main menu and lock the screen. And you can turn on the motor by twisting the red stop button. You can then turn the center dial one more to the right to activate control. You can then use the joysticks to pan the motor to the side of the vehicle in order to have a better position in which to install the arm. Turn the system off by first turning the dial to the middle position. Next, you can press the red stop button. Then, you can rotate the center dial to the left in order to turn the entire system off. You will then need to unplug first the power cable and then the controller communication cable. And then power off your battery, converter, and unplug the system. You are now ready to install the arm. To start, you will install the first part of the arm to the body of the tilt access module. You will need to line up the pins on the back of the arm with the slots and then pull down to line them into place. You can then use the included bolts and tools to secure six bolts to each section of the arm. You will then be able to attach additional parts of the arm in a similar fashion. Once properly aligned, the arm should be able to hold itself in place. Once the arm is assembled, you can then install the two sets of cable support rods. To start, you'll need to mount the rod element of the cable support rod into the base of the tilt access module. You can then use this additional support bracket and locking pin to further secure the support rod in place. Please note, if you're having issues aligning the bracket, you can rotate it to extend it. You can then connect the four additional support rods into the arm. Next, you'll attach the support cables to the cable support rods. To do this, insert one end of the support cable into the support rod and lock it in place with a pin. You can then run the cable through the integrated slots on the other two support rods and lock the end in with a pin.
You can then adjust the tension by tightening the tension adjustment screw on the support cables. Keep in mind you'll want this to be fairly taut, but not too tight. Next, you can install the shock absorbing arm. This connects in a similar fashion with two pins that can be slid into place and then further secured with four bolts. You are now ready to attach your gimbal. For this setup, we're using an RS3 Pro with our power supply base plate for DJI Ronin connected with the quick release plate that is included with the shock absorbing arm. You can then connect the gimbal via the quick release plate receiver and lock it into place. Position the gimbal so that the screen is facing outward for easy access. Next, you can undo your locks to make sure your camera system is balanced and make any adjustments as needed. You can then attach a V-mount or gold mount battery for power and connect the included D-tap to two pin power cable. You can also run the cable through the shock absorbing arm in order to keep it more tidy. Once the power cable is connected, you can then turn on the gimbal and make any calibrations or adjustments as necessary. You can then reconnect power to the arm by first connecting the controller communication cable to the base of the pan access module and then reconnecting the controller. And then you can reconnect the power cable to the base of the pan access module. And then reconnect the power cable to your converter before powering on the battery and then powering on the converter and power on the controller by turning the center dial to the middle position. After reading the disclaimer, you can then press accept to boot up the system. Once powered on, you'll notice a green LED indicator on the side of the pan access module. This green solid LED indicates that the arm is powered and control is active. If the light is flickering, that implies there's a communication issue. Please check the status of the LED on the side of your pan access module before moving forward. If you need to move the arm manually, you can press the button next to the green LED indicator to disable the controller. This button will start flashing, indicating that you can now manually move the arm by hand. When the arm is not installed, you can also use this button in order to raise the arm to its highest position in order to change out an internal component. We're now going to look at how to balance the shock absorbing arm. The goal is to adjust the dampening so that when you release the gimbal, it quickly returns to center. You can adjust the vertical or tilt dampening in a similar fashion by adjusting the small dial on top of the arm. Please note this comes preset for a 5 kg payload, meaning in most cases this will not need to be adjusted. For better control of your gimbal while on a moving vehicle, we recommend using the DJI external GPS module. Next, we'll take a look at how to calibrate the horizon of the arm. To power it on, turn the dial in the center to the middle position. After reading the disclaimer, press agree. You will then need to wait approximately 30 seconds for the system to fully boot up. The first thing to look at would be the connection status between the arm and controller. You can see that the arm is connected to the controller here. You can now see the motor status here. To engage the motor, turn the red stop button to the right. You'll notice the red motor indicator changes to blue. You can now activate the controller by turning the center dial to the right. The red controller indicator has now turned blue. You will then need to position the arm until it appears level in relation to your vehicle. Note, this may not align with zero on the screen UI. To open the main menu, first unlock the screen by double tapping the lock icon. You can open the main menu here. To calibrate this new horizon position, press device info, then press gyro. You will then hear a beep. To save the setting, you will need to restart the system by turning off control and then pressing the red button to disengage the motor before turning the dial all the way to the left to power off the system. We'll now take a look at how to adjust the joystick settings on the controller. First, test both of your joysticks by applying slight pressure on each of them to see which is aligned to which function. Then unlock the screen by double tapping the lock icon. 
and open the main menu in the top right corner. Then press Settings to open up Joystick Settings. Here, you can see which joystick is assigned to which axis. To change the configuration, press the Set button on either of the joysticks. You can also change the directions of both the pan and tilt axis to be counterclockwise or clockwise. Here is where we can enable gimbal control. Here is where you can electronically adjust the motors for different payloads. And here is an option for enabling additional stabilization. You can then test the configuration of the joysticks without exiting the menu. And you can press return to return to the home screen. Now we're going to take a look at how to set your pan axis position as well as how to set A and B limits for both the tilt and pan motors. To start, you will need to adjust the position of your arm so that it is directly in front of your vehicle. Don't worry about the number readout on the UI as this is what we are calibrating to become the new zero. Unlock the screen by double tapping the unlock key. Once your arm is physically in position, press the red button in the center to reset your zero point. The physical position of your arm should now align with the UI of your controller. In order to set a limitation for the pan axis, first find your leftmost point. You can set this as your A point by pressing the Pan Limit Settings button. Then adjust your arm to its rightmost point, and then lock in your B point by again pressing the same button. The arm will now be unable to travel past these set points. You can remove these points at any time by pressing the Pan Limit Settings button for a third time. To set your limits for the tilt axis, at first find your maximum height. Set your A point by pressing the Tilt Limit Settings button. Then move the arm to its lowest safe position and lock in your B point with the same button. The arm will now be unable to exceed the range that you set for the tilt motor. You can remove these limits at any time by pressing the Tilt Limit Settings button for a third time. Please note we only recommend operating the arm when you have tilt limits activated. We're now going to take a look at how to adjust the speed and dampening. You can find the dials to control speed and dampening for the pan axis, as well as their indicators on the UI on the left-hand side of the screen. To adjust the speed, simply adjust the dials. You will then find the dampening and speed dials for the tilt axis on the right-hand side, as well as the corresponding indicators on the UI. The lower the speed, the slower the arm will physically travel. The higher the speed, the faster the arm will physically travel and the more sensitive the joysticks will be. The lower the dampening, the more gradually the arm will come to a stop. The higher the dampening, the faster it will stop. Next, we're going to take a look at how to control an RS2 or RS3 Pro through the controller. First, unlock the screen. Then, select Gimbal in the main menu. The first thing you'll notice is that you're able to manually adjust the channel number if needed. The next option you'll notice will allow you to calibrate the wheels above the joysticks located on the top of the controller. To calibrate, simply hold one wheel to the left side and release, then to the right and release. The indicators should change from red to blue. You can then press the button in the center to return to the gimbal menu. To connect your gimbal to the controller, press the easy mode button. After installing the Tilta wireless receiver, double tap the power button and you will see a blinking red light. Back on the controller, a number 1 should appear, and pressing connect should link the two. The wireless receiver module's light should turn solid green, indicating you have a connection. You can then exit the menu by pressing return. You can then return to the joystick menu by accessing the main menu and pressing settings. You can then press the button in the center to enable pro mode. You'll notice one joystick now has full control of the arm, while the other has full control of your gimbal. You can swap which joystick controls what by pressing set. You can also adjust the direction of the gimbal and arm to be counterclockwise or clockwise for any of the axes. You can then use the right finger wheel over the joystick to control dial functions such as roll. And you can use the finger wheel over the arm joystick to control the speed of your gimbal. Please note the controller will beep to indicate you are increasing or decreasing the speed. 
you also find a record button which can be used when using optional run stop cables for the RS2 or RS3 Pro. A situation you may find yourself in is where the UI of the controller does not line up with the direction the arm is moving. As you can see, we're moving the joystick to the left and the UI is moving to the right and vice versa. In order to correct this, we're going to unlock the screen and go into the device info setting on the menu. Here, we'll find Pan UI Cow, which we can activate by holding down the record button and then pressing. You can then return to the main menu and find that the direction of the arm, joystick, and UI is all aligned. You'll follow similar steps to fix this issue with the tilt axis. As you can see, the arm is physically traveling up, but the indicator is moving down, and vice versa. We'll go back to Device Info on the main menu, hold down the Record button, and press the Tilt UI Cal button and we'll return to the main menu to find that the direction of the tilt axis is now realigned with the UI. We're now gonna look at a few remaining options in the menu of the controller. We're gonna open up the main menu and select Device Info. On the top right, you'll see an option to change the language between English and Chinese. Below that is an option for firmware upgrades. We'll have more information on how to do that on our website. Next to that is a service button that is only used by our service engineers when completing repairs. Above that, you'll find the gyro cal button, which recalibrates the horizon of the arm. Above that, you'll find joystick cal, which is going to allow you to reset the center point of the joysticks should you encounter any joystick drifting or issues with controls. In the bottom left corner, you'll see an option to factory reset the controller. Please note this will require your authorization key, so make sure you have that handy before resetting the controller. Above that, you'll see the system's current firmware, as well as the device info, which is what the controller will read as when connected to a computer. Next, we'll take a look at how to install the interior monitor mounting hardware that's included with the Hydra Arm Mini. To start, we're going to install the front seat monitor mounting bracket, which is composed of two suction cups and two large Noga arms, as well as one large monitor bracket. You can then loosely configure the bracket in a position that you feel will best suit your vehicle. Once you've found a good position, you can attach the suction cups to the windshield and adjust the articulating arms in order to better position the monitor bracket. You can then attach up to three monitors via quarter 20 threads and adjust the position of these monitor brackets via the quarter 20 washers on the back. For the back seat, the kit includes two headrest monitor brackets. Simply align all elements of the headrest mounting bracket and connect via the included bolts. The horizontal positioning of this bracket can be adjusted to accommodate a variety of vehicles. Once fully secure, you can then attach a monitor via a quarter 20 thread and adjust as needed. This was a quick start guide on how to set up and use the Hydra Arm Mini. Thanks for watching.